So in this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can benchmark the new YOLO 11 model. We're both going to do the benchmarking on a GPU and also CPU. So we're going to do comparisons, but also all the optimization frameworks we can convert the YOLO 11 model into. So we can basically just take the raw PyTorch model, export it into ONNX, OpenVINO, TensorRT, CoreML, and so on. It's going to do that automatically. We just need to run a single benchmark command and then make sure that we have these framework installed if we want to run it on a GPU or CPU. So let's just jump straight into the documentation. If we go inside the task tab, we can go down at the bottom and see we have this bench marking. It's just a single command that we need to run. It's going to take care of all of it. We already have videos covering the benchmarking for ULV8 and so on. So it's really easy to use, but let's go ahead and take a look at the actual like, results. So if you're doing these exports and optimizations with the benchmarking, like we can get up to like three, five times inference speed just by using these optimization framework. For example, OpenVINO, ONNX if you run it on a CPU or TensorRT if you're running it on NVIDIA GPUs, then you can actually just by exporting into TensorRT engine, get up to five times more frames per second. So this is how we can use it. Use the example, we can both do it in Python, but also from the command line and all these arguments can be specified. So the model, that will just be the path to our model, the data we want to do the benchmarking on, so it could be your own custom data set, but we also have the Coco data set available. Image size, if you want to use half precision, could be that you're using full precision. You can also go in and specify half precision, which is basically just going to run it even faster. It can go in and activate int 8 quantization. So if you want to go from floating point 16 bits to int 8, that can also basically just increase your model inference speed significantly without really losing that much accuracy. Then we can specify the device if you want to run it on CUDA, so CUDA Zero here, or if you just want to test it out on our CPU. So this is pretty much everything. These are all the export formats that we're going to test it up against. So let's just jump straight into it and see how we can run it. To benchmark the GPU, I'm just going to run it in a Google Colab notebook. I've connected my environment and runtime to an 800 GPU from NVIDIA. First of all, just make sure that you have pip install autolytics if you're running into any errors. It might be because you don't have the latest version. We need that if you want to run the new YOLO 11 model. Then we can scroll a bit further down and act like run this command. So it's just YOLO benchmark model. So again, if you want to run tracking, update detection and all of that, you just call predict or train instead of benchmark. But we also have this benchmark task. Specify the model, we just run it on the nano version of the new YOLO 11 model. Dataset here will just be a small subset of a Coco dataset. Image size, we're not going to use half precision and we're going to run it on a GPU. I just ran this command here because it takes some time to go in and do the benchmarking. It will set up all the optimization frameworks, run inference through all those optimization frameworks once it has exported the model. And then at the end, we will just get this summary. So it's basically just running it through all of them here. For example, we can see we start with TorchScript, PyTorch, and CNN, all of them are pretty much just being benchmarked here. If we scroll a bit further down to the bottom, we can see all the export formats. So we have PyTorch, TorchScript, ONNX, OpenVINO, TensorRT, CoreML, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, TensorFlow Edge TPU, TensorFlow JavaScript, Paddle Paddle, and CNN. So all of these optimization frameworks are available. We can see the ones who are available on TPUs, the other ones is only supported on CPU. So OpenVINO, for example, only supported on CPU unless you have Intel GPUs. But again, we can take a look at the frames per seconds. This is just a raw PyTorch model. So once you specify YOLO 11, nano, small, whatever version, and then you just have .pt, that is the raw model. And if we just take a look at the mean error position, we can see that no matter what of the frameworks we're using, we don't really lose any accuracy at all. And we can see the number of frames per seconds, the inference time, so that's how many milliseconds it takes to process a single image. Let's just take a look at the frames per second and compare those. So that is 27 frames per second for the raw PyTorch model. Just by converting it into TorchScript, we can actually get 172 frames per second. So that's basically just like a 5x, like 5, 6, 7x that we get directly from that framework. ONNX is still faster. It's not as fast compared to the other frameworks, but it's still faster. And the big winner here when you're using NVIDIA GPUs is definitely TensorRT. So you're going to take the raw PyTorch model, convert it into ONNX, and then generate an engine file based on that. So it's going to do a lot of optimization specifically for NVIDIA hardware. 400 frames per second. So that's basically just like a 10, 12x that you get directly from running it with TensorRT compared to the PyTorch model. So that's pretty insane. The TensorFlow version model here doesn't really improve that performance, but you can see the difference by just converting it to TensorRT. 
like two milliseconds per image. Again, this is running on an 800. So if you're using lower end views, you might not get the exact same speed up, but this is very, very nice. While it was running here in the Google Colab notebook for the GPU, I also tested it out just on my MacBook. So I'm using a MacBook M2 chip just for the CPU, because again, it is better compared to the one in Google Colab. And then we can have the result side by side here. So I ran the exact same command at the top here. The only difference is that I specified basically just the device that we're running it on and I'm running it on the CPU. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the exact same results, but now we have some other frameworks. So now we also have OpenVINO and CoreML, where CoreML is specifically for Apple hardware. So that is also why we can see that we get the most frames per second when we run it with CoreML, because it then is going to use the optimization, the CPU optimizations from Apple. The PyTorch version here, let me just zoom in here a bit so you guys can better see what's going on. There we go. So 16 frames per second with the raw PyTorch model, that's still very fast on a CPU, especially also compared to the GPU version over here. Torch script, it's slower if you convert it to that. On an X, it is basically like a 2X that we get directly from that one. Open window is not really faster, but that's more specifically for Intel GPUs and also CPUs. So basically just Intel hardware in general. The most speed up we get is basically this one here. So that's like a 4X that we get by just converting it into Core ML, which is an optimized framework specifically for Apple hardware. So this is really important that we do this once we want to take our models from a Jupyter Notebook after we train it and want to put it into the real world because this can have a huge impact from going from like 10 frames per second to 30 frames per second. So we can actually run our models in real time might be that we can optimize our model so we can run on cheaper and lower end hardware. That's going to have a significant business impact by just basically just optimizing your model. You just make your model three times faster. It requires less hardware. You can run it faster and it will be more efficient without really losing accuracy. So here we can see that even by optimizing here, we act like get a bit better mean error position, but it really depends on your data set. This is still only a very small data set that we're running it on, but normally you don't really lose any accuracy as long as you're just converting it to a different framework. You might lose accuracy if you start to play around with quantization. So going from 32 float to 16, all the way down to integer eight bits, then you might start to lose a bit of accuracy, but you will get significant speed ups with your model as well. So it's always a trade off between accuracy and speed. But the results here, they just speak for themselves. This is really important that we take into account when we want to run computer vision models and put them into production. So thanks a lot for watching this video here, guys. I hope you have learned a ton. Definitely go and check it out. Make sure that you benchmark your own models, both do comparisons with different versions of the YOLO models, YOLO V8, YOLO 11, even different variations, so the nano, small, medium, and also your specific data set and hardware where you want to run your own computer vision models. So thank you a lot for watching this video here. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming ones. Until then, happy benchmarking.